Dear viewers of the Tom Photo channel, today I'd like to play the game of find the problem with this picture. I'll show you some of my photos that are not good but not terrible either. They could almost pass as pretty good pictures, but they have problems. Criticizing pictures that have small problems is more powerful for learning photography than talking about obvious problems where you don't even have to think what went wrong. Let me know in the comments if you agree with my judgment. So here we go. A problem with symmetry. I was not right in the middle of this piece of street art and the floor now looks bent. Your attention is drawn to the wrong part of the photo. Everything light is on the left, far and out of focus. Everything dark is on the right and in focus. The photo is therefore heavy on the right and light on the left. Try this instead and the same scene becomes much better. The matching colors even help here. The shadows are randomly positioned, a wrong time of day was chosen. The birch leaves far away are washed out. I should have underexposed even more because the front trees can get darker no problem. The reflections on water are more interesting than the trees. Still the water is in the dark and attention goes away from the water. Wrong time of day chosen here by me. The tree is okay, but it's quite static, just a tree. Maybe add the sun between the branches and it gets better. The background is too detailed to draw your attention to the apples. A better bokeh could help this scene. The trees don't look prominent enough, but they were bright and yellow against the sky in reality. I think I overdid the dynamic range here. I selected a too modest film simulation. There's no reason why these bright yellow colors should look pale like they do here. A problem with symmetry. If you aim for symmetry and it is not perfect, it will not look good. Great symmetry or no symmetry at all. Always one of the two. Just a boring picture you've seen too many times. Nothing wrong with it. And that could actually be its main problem. Wrong shutter speed. You either freeze the motion or you let the water become silky by exposing longer with an ND filter. This is neither. Here's the same picture with shutter speed of one second. This otherwise good photo is ruined by the barely visible electrical line in the sky. When you have a tranquil lake and cool clouds, then there is no reason to hide them behind branches. Leave the branches behind you and things get much better. With people or animals, you'll want to focus on their eyes, usually the closest eye. Here I failed to do that, instead the nose of the cat is in focus here. Sometimes the smallest thing in the picture that looked okay at the scene manages to damage the picture, as is the case with the little dark plant on the right. Your eyes should go to the trees on the left instead. Here I couldn't decide how much of the background I wanted to show behind the pine branches. I showed too much and this creates confusion. With this picture I went for the shadows but the shadows were not strong enough. I should have gone for the trees as shown in this example. All the interesting and nice things are on the left. The weird branches and electrical lines cannot make up for what's missing on the right. These snowmen after a snowstorm are quite okay, but I failed to remove the shovel because I didn't want to leave any tracks. For me it was okay though because I was simply recording what the kids were doing the day before. The photo is top heavy and out of balance. The shadows simply cannot compete with the dark trunks. Guess which duck I was photographing? Yes, I don't know either, but I should have known. This is much better, I think you agree. A large area is spent on showing something that's not interesting enough. The cat is okay, but unfortunately there is a competing image in the picture that may catch your eye before the cat. This picture is framed like they sometimes suggest in some photo tutorials. The problem we have is that there's nothing much inside the frame. I'm sure your eyes are making round movements trying to see where the moose, deer, bear or wolf is located. Sorry, but there aren't any. This photo follows the rules of composition quite well, but it is not easy to understand what it should show. 
I took this picture simply to test some HDR settings. Technically speaking, the photo is okay. It is often okay to leave something out of focus before and after your subject, but here the before and after look the same as the subject. So why are we drawing attention to a random section of the woods? Here it is not obvious how much this picture is about the stream and how much it is about the woods. The lighting is not perfect either. This might look like a fine picture and it is okay, but see what happens when I relocate the background light. Now the flower actually looks in the right direction. This is a pretty classical out of balance picture. The interest factor of the small tree on the left is not enough to counterbalance the water. And the tree doesn't follow the rule of thirds. Technically it obeys the rule of fifths, but one fifth from the edge is not a good solution. The bridge has a problem, it points in the wrong direction and it is not clear where it goes. The bridge should work as a leading line, but it does not lead to a logical or interesting place. This picture could benefit from much more intense colors and higher contrast, so a wrong selection of film simulation and other settings. I think I tried to go for the rule of fifth here. The problem is that I tried to do it the same for left and right. As a result, it looks like something is missing in the middle and the poor little branch now has to compete directly with a more interesting pattern on the left. I was happy I got the bee in perfect position. Unfortunately, I didn't have a macro lens and everything is just too small. This rose photo is simply not special enough. People take these photos all the time. I don't even have reflections or water droplets to make it a pleasant to watch cliché. This photo has no story. It is simply a close-up of a random spot on planet Earth. You see, I can be harsh today because these are all my photos. Both the background and the flower were in the shadow. This is not optimal for flowers. Playing with contrast settings and white balance could rescue this photo to an extent. I wanted to show the grass, but also like the trees behind. I needed to choose because I cannot have both. A much smaller f-stop would have been warranted for sure. What's wrong with this photo? I used Fuji Velvia film simulation and that made the green color glow more than I like. I should have gone for less aggressive green. This is a photo many people take when they see flowers, taken from a convenient and lazy height without bending one's knees or back. All that it can give you is a very average looking photo that doesn't stand out. It is not good to cut blossoms in half, even when they are in the background. A cleaner look like this one is often preferred. Why are these flowers facing in the wrong direction? Are you also asking the same question? Where to focus in close-ups? The plane of focus is so shallow that you cannot get everything. I focus on the top of the anthers, but you still have so many anthers at different distances. This picture does not have obvious problems. This photo is overexposed. I wanted a light and transparent look. Where do I even start with this photo? Wrong focusing, wrong direction, boring composition, colors nothing special. Putting the main subject in the middle can make watching your photo uneasy. It's like you'll want to turn your head slightly to push the main subject into the one-third composition. Nice building but hidden behind several layers. Especially the layer of park benches doesn't work well for the photo. City streets, but especially city cafes, look most natural with people. So maybe don't photograph street cafes early in the morning before they open. If one flower among many beautiful flowers is not so beautiful, it will stand out and will make the viewer ask questions. Here's an example where the rule of thirds doesn't work. This goes to show that photography is not about blindly following rules. I have photographed beautiful wildflowers, but left a bit less beautiful plants in the picture. It's okay because this is the way it was, but surely the impact of the yellow flowers is reduced. The background is lit and the flowers are in the shadow. It should have been the other way around. Bokeh is a good thing, but here I overdid it. I should have used a deeper depth of field because only a handful of flowers are in focus. In this picture, the ducks don't stand out. The contrast is too low. The cave is next to water, 
but water has no dimensions or scale. It would have been nice to have something in the foreground as well, to give the photo some depth. I focused to the one-third point with a very large aperture. As a result, random flowers are in focus, but most are not. You have to work hard to find the few flowers that are in focus. Does this look like a landscape photo? Wrong. You don't see the crane because I failed to use a telephoto lens. These flowers will look like a mess to you. The situation is made worse by the too detailed background. This is a better photo of the same flowers, but unfortunately they are in the shadow. I should have waited for the cloud to move. I corrected the wall lines of this building, so I got it much better than it was out of the camera. With this I lost all of the space around it. The result is a cramped photo. Extra space around the building would have added a lot to the photo. The beetles don't show their faces because I could not focus so that both would be sharp. In this situation, better worry about just one of them and use the other one as background. This was an f1.2 photo at 56mm focal length, and yet I could not put the woman enough out of focus. Sometimes you hit technical limitations. Which is more mystical? Is it the one that shows the sky and therefore reveals where we really are? Or is it the one that leaves everything more secret? I think it's the latter. It makes you think more. The rabbit is partly behind a branch and a bit out of focus. I know these are both problems, but I only had a few seconds through the car window before the rabbit ran away. Here's a classical problem, one or both. Here I kind of wanted them both, but technically I could not do it and the result is not very good. Is it better to have symmetry and more detailed background? Or perhaps more variability and less focus on the background? The last one looks more pleasing to the eye. Generally I like reflections and lens circles in the background, but here it completely steals the show from the flower that I was really photographing. How do you like this photo? I kind of like the bright green color, but then again it makes my eyes go left and right comparing the petals with the bright leaf. The photo is not peaceful enough. Here I'd like to have only the front flowers in focus and background flowers completely out of focus. Unfortunately this is not possible because I do not have an f0.9 lens. This photo is not bad, but unfortunately I had dust on the sensor that ruined the sky. So make sure your sensor is clean. I focused on the yellow field and that left the tree a bit out of focus. Traditionally you'd focus on the tree and use either a very large or a very small aperture. I didn't feel like doing it. Did I ruin my picture? At least Shutterstock liked it because the photo got accepted. Here's a pretty mysterious scene but the small tree on the left looks like it's a pole helping the other trees to stand upright. I have a problem with this. This photo has no story, just a meadow with dandelions. You as a viewer might ask why. Here I photographed the field but I think I'm showing too much of it. Less of the field and more clouds will actually make the picture more interesting. It's a good idea to show the entire animal or a small part of it. Leaving out a small part is often a problem. Should you focus on the anthers of the blossom or the fly? With a very large insect, the answer would be clear. If you have two small flies, the answer becomes a bit more clear too, provided you can find a way to put them both in focus. I love black and white photography, but the cat is too similar to the background to really make the monochrome work. Color would have worked better here. Here the tree is unfavorably positioned behind the cat. A similar tree on the left of the cat would have been good. This is another example where black and white can result in a mess. You need larger differences in focus and contrast to make it work. This apple tree blossom is nice, but it has competition in the other corner of the photo. It helps to take that competition out of the photo. I hope you liked my tour of troublesome photos. I might do it more in the future with other photos too. 
If you liked it, I'd like to ask you to consider subscribing to my channel or leaving a like. This will help me. Thanks so much. See you soon. Goodbye.